Welcome back to Analysis of Long-Lived Assets, Part 2. In this video, we are going to analyze the intangible assets and its impact on the financial statements. Intangible assets are long-lived assets that do not have physical substance. They include patents, copyrights, trademarks, brand names, license technology, franchises, as well as employment contracts. Businesses can create or they can acquire intangible assets. Intangible assets are recorded at full cost, then amortized over their useful life on a straight line basis. In determining the useful life, a company should consider obsolescence, inadequacy, and other factors that may cause a patent or other intangible asset to become economically ineffective before the end of its legal life. The cost of intangible assets with indefinite lives should not be amortized. Before moving to the analysis, let's learn the types of intangible assets. Patent is an exclusive right issued by the patent office that enables the recipient to manufacture, sell, or otherwise control an invention for a period of 20 years from the date of the draft. The initial cost of a patent is the cash or cash equivalent price paid to acquire the patent. Legal cost of protecting a patent in an infringement suit are added to the patent account and amortized over the remaining life of the patent. Copyrights are granted by the government, giving the owner the exclusive right to reproduce and sell an artistic or published work. Copyright is extended for the life of the creator plus 50 years. The cost of copyright consists of the cost of acquiring and defending it. The useful life of a copyright generally is significantly shorter than its legal life. Trademark or a trade name is a word, phrase, jingle or a symbol that distinguish or identify a particular enterprise or a product such as Coca-Cola, Sunlight, McDonald's, KFC, etc. The creator or the original user may obtain exclusive legal rights to the trademark or trade name by the registering it with the patent office. The registration provides 20 years of protection and may be renewed indefinitely. Because trademarks and trade names have infinite lives, they are not amortized. Franchises and Licenses Franchise is a contractual agreement under which the franchisor grant the franchisee the right to sell certain products to render specific services or to use certain trademarks or trade names, usually within a designated geographical area. Type of franchise granted by the government body 
permit the enterprise to use specific public property in performing its services, such as the use of airways for radio or TV broadcasting. In that case, such operating rights are referred to as licenses. Intangible assets should be recognized when the cost can be identified with the acquisition of the license or franchise. Annual payment made under franchise agreement should be recorded as operating expenses in the period which they are incurred. In the case of limited life, the cost of franchise should be amortized as an operating expense over its useful life. On the other hand, if the life is indefinite or perpetual, the cost is not amortized. Goodwill represent the value of all favorable attributes that relate to a business enterprise, including exceptional management, desirable location, good customer relations, skilled employees, etc. Goodwill can be identified only with the business as a whole and only recognized when it can be demonstrated by an excess purchase price. When it comes to accounting, you have to remember three things. First thing is, the goodwill is recorded only when there is an exchange transaction that involves the purchase of an entire business. Secondly, when an entire business is purchased, the goodwill is the excess of cost over the fair market value of the net assets acquired. Goodwill is not amortized because it is considered to have an indefinite life. However, it must be written down if its value is determined to have a permanently decline, in other words, impaired. Research and development represent the activities companies undertake to innovate and introduce new technology, products, services and systems or to improve their existing offerings that it will either use or to sell. Companies in different sectors and industries conduct research and development, such as pharmaceutical companies, semiconductors, and technology companies generally spend most of their money on research and development. Let's see why do the companies invest in money on research and development? First, to create new and improved products. Most of the customers may demand for new and better products to solve their problems more quickly and easily. It will increase the business efficiency by increasing the productivity, by eliminating time-consuming inefficiencies and allocating resources to the most impactful, valuable projects. Companies can increase the business efficiency. It may be able to reduce the cost by bringing your customers an efficient product in the market and eliminating non-value adding costs. It will improve the competitiveness. By investing in emerging technologies will improve the product as well as it will gain a competitive edge over the other competitors. Finally, it will secure the investment. Even though the research and development efforts are immediately profitable, in future they will give a benchmark for the companies on the investment. Let's see the accountant treatment. Under IS 38, state that an intangible asset is to be recognized if 
there is a probable transfer of future economy benefit from the asset and it should be reliably measured. Let's look at the research praise. Here it is impossible to demonstrate whether or not a product or service will generate any probable future economic benefit. Hence, the recoverability of research expenditure is highly uncertain at the start of a project. Therefore, according to IAS 38, it is stated that all expenditures incurred at the research stage should be written off to the income statement as an expense when they incurred and it will never be capitalized as an intangible asset. Let's look at the development price. Under IS 38, development cost must be capitalized if the following criteria are met. Firstly, there must be a technical feasibility of completing the intangible asset. Then, there must be an intention and ability to complete and use or sell the asset. There must be an existence of a market. Without the market, no point to develop. Then, if it is used internally, there must be a usefulness of the asset. And we have to check the availability of the adequate technical, financial and other resources to complete the asset. Finally, the cost of the asset can be measured reliably. If they fail to recognize the above criteria, then it should be charged to the income statement as an expenditure to the relevant period. Finally, you should remember research and development cost considered as an expense if the future economic benefits are highly uncertain and difficult to predict. The casual relationship between current research and development and future revenue has not been demonstrated. And finally, whatever the benefits may arise, it cannot be objectively measured. Let's look at the treatment of capitalized development cost. Once development costs have been capitalized, we have to recognize an asset. Then we have to amortize it according to the accrual concept over its finite life. Amortization must only begin when commercial production has commenced. Each development project must be reviewed at the end of each accounting period to ensure that the recognition criteria are still met. If the criteria are no longer met, then the previously capitalized cost must be written off to the income statement immediately. Intangible asset directly impact all the three financial statements. It records as an intangible asset on the statement of financial position. Also, the purchase cost is recorded as an investing outflow on the cash flow statement. The amortization expense of the period is recorded on the income statement. Let's look at the impact on the ratios. Intangible assets mainly affect the profitability ratios as well as the solvency ratios. Let's look at the profitability ratios. The profitability ratios has a negative impact due to the intangible assets. The ROA ROE will decrease as a result of intangible assets. 
because in the ROE, the denominator or the equity will go up as a result of intangible assets. Therefore, as a ratio, ROE will go down. When it comes to ROA, the asset value or the denominator value will add up the intangible assets. Due to the large denominator or the asset value, the ROA ratio will go down. Let's look at the solvency ratios. The debt to equity ratio is one of the ratios that determine the percentage of debt and equity being used to provide the assets. This ratio used to evaluate companies' financial leverage. Intangible assets had negative impact on debt policy. Because of intangible assets, in the debt to equity ratio, the equity portion will increase. As a result, the debt to equity ratio will go down. This is a good sign for the company. On the other hand, debt ratio can be used. Debt ratio is a financial ratio that measures the extent of company's leverage. It is calculated by debt divided by total assets. Due to the intangible assets, the denominator or the total asset value go up. As a result, the debt ratio value will go down. Hence, the intangible asset has a positive impact on the solvency ratio. Let's look at the other ratios which used to measure the intangible assets. First one is goodwill to asset ratio. That is measured by goodwill divided by the total assets. This measures the proportion of goodwill among the total assets. A higher ratio indicates that there is more goodwill compared to the tangible assets while lower ratio indicate that there are more tangible assets. This information can be used by companies to assess the liquidity of a company's asset. When making decisions about whether to sell certain assets. Intangible asset turnover ratio can be calculated by dividing the sales by the intangible assets. It indicates the effectiveness of intangible assets used in the company. Large ratio value means that financial resources engaged in these assets generate higher revenue from sales, while lower ratio indicate that intangible assets generate lower revenue from sales. So hope you have gained much knowledge with regard to the intangible assets, types of intangible assets, accounting treatment and its impact on the ratios. So keep in touch and go through the analysis of long lived assets part one as well as stay tuned with the next one with regard to the software development and how to analyze the cost which is relating to the softwares, oil refineries and utility companies.